I can't think of a witty intro for this one. How can you make a joke for a rocket with such a cool name? Today's rocket family comes from a rocket company you can't find much about. I mean, look at their website. From what I found, E-Prime started out as E-Prime Laboratories, a Titusville-based environmental consulting firm founded in 1978. The founder was an ex-Boeing engineer named Bob Davis. Eventually, he was able to get engineers at Kennedy Space Center to join his next venture, E-Prime Aerospace, in about 1986-ish. Their plan? Seize the opportunity after Challenger to snag up the reinvigorated commercial launch market. First, they'd build Loft-1, a small suborbital sounding rocket meant to just test out the company. You know, integration, customer service, working with payloads, that sort of thing. It launched on November 17th, 1988 from Cape Canaveral, carrying several payloads to 14,000 feet. It's also the first privately built commercial rocket to launch from there. Seriously. The real plan was for something much bigger. E-Prime planned to build a modular, all-solid launch vehicle called Astra. That sounds familiar. I can't find anything on that design. The later design was to be built out of spare Peacekeeper missile parts. Peacekeeper was intended to be a post-attack ballistic missile, capable of doing retaliation launches after an initial nuclear bombing. I think. From what I've read, the project didn't get too far for a number of reasons, mostly political, and uh, I'm not going to dwell on this too much. Eagles, as they would be called, would be built out of five basic parts. Part 1 is the first stage of the Peacekeeper, called TU-903. It's also a Castor 120, sort of. It contains 45.69 metric tons of propellant, weighs 50 metric tons full, has an average thrust of 2200 kilonewtons, and a vacuum-specific impulse of 277 seconds. Part 2 was the Peacekeeper second stage, called SR-119. 24.49 tons of propellant, 27.67 wet, an average thrust of 1223 kilonewtons, and an average specific impulse of 308 seconds. Part 3 is, ooh, this is a tough one, the Peacekeeper third stage, called SR-120. 7.08 tons of propellant, 7.71 metric tons wet, an average thrust of 298.1 kilonewtons, and a specific impulse of 300 seconds. An optional stage was the Peacekeeper post-boost vehicle, a liquid fourth stage meant for course corrections to deliver MIRVs to the Soviet Union and other fun targets like that. Instead of ground delivery, this would be modified for satellite delivery burns, powered by an RS-34 pressure-fed hypergolic motor. RS-34s have 11.7 kilonewtons of thrust and an ISP of 308 seconds. I can't find anything about the mass properties of this stage. The other optional stage is called the Unified Satellite Transfer Module, a restartable upper stage that I can't find anything on. This modular approach can be seen in these three Eagles. Eagle, the second smallest vehicle, uses an SR-119 for the first and second stages, with the post-boost vehicle as the third stage. Eagle S3 has two TU-903s as boosters around a TU-903 first stage. The second stage is a vacuum-optimized TU-903, the third stage is an SR-119, and the fourth is the post-boost vehicle. Eagle S-7 has six TU-903s wrapped around the first TU-903 stage. Stage 2 is also a vacuum-optimized TU-903, stage 3 is another SR-119. Stages 4 and 5 are the post-boost vehicle and the USTM. This modularity allows for a wide range of payloads, as you can guess. E-Prime did hit a snag with commercializing Peacekeeper, however. That snag is called the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, which forbade Peacekeeper first stages from being sold for about nine years. Eventually, E-Prime was able to commercialize Peacekeeper. There are also plans to make their own solid fuels, but I can't find anything on that either. The Eagle family would be comprised of nine vehicles. Launch sites vary depending on the source. Polar launches from Vandenberg or Kodiak Island, Leo launches from Cape Canaveral, Wallops Island, and even Ascension Island. Eaglet, 
is the smallest vehicle, made of an SR119, SR120, and post-boost vehicle. It can carry 581 kilograms to an equatorial orbit, or 431 kilograms to a polar orbit. Eagle, the one you saw earlier, can carry 1361 kilograms to a low equatorial orbit, or 898 to a polar orbit. And fun fact, these two would use the Peacekeeper Cold Launch Scheme. They'd be shot out of their launch silos up to 61 meters into the air before first stage ignition. I found a few videos of this in action, but I'm not sure if I can use them. Uh, links in the description. Eagle S1 had the TU-903 first stage, SR-119 second, and PBV third. The rest of the vehicles all have this scheme, so I'm not going to keep saying them. This one can toss 2,948 kilograms into an equatorial orbit, 1,946 to polar, and 1,297 to geostationary transfer orbit. Eagle S2 has a TU-903 first and second stage, SR-119 third, and the optional PBV. 4,536 kilograms to equatorial, 2,994 kilograms to polar, and 2,062 kilograms to GTO. Eagle S3, which you saw earlier, can throw 7,677 kilograms to an equatorial orbit, 5,067 kilograms to polar, and 2,456 kilograms to GTO. Eagle S4, with three boosters, can throw 9,825 kilograms to equatorial, 6,485 to polar, and 3,143 kilograms to GTO. Eagle S5 has four boosters. It doesn't seem to have the post-boost vehicle, but the USTM. 12,701 kilograms to LEO, 8,382 to polar, and 4,064 to GTO. Eagle S6, five boosters, which is different. I don't think there's many that do that. Uh, still no post-boost vehicle from what I can see. 18,720 kilograms to equatorial, 12,415 kilograms to polar, and 6,110 kilograms to GTO. Eagle S7, which you also saw earlier, has the PBV and USTM. 26,916 kilograms to LEO, nothing to polar, I don't know why, uh, probably pad limitations, I don't really know, and 8,972 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit. For reference, Falcon 9 Expendable can throw about 25 metric tons to LEO and 8 to GTO. Considering E-Prime was advertising launching at 20 to 60% the price of its competitors in the 90s, they might have given SpaceX a run for their money. Would Eagle have worked? Uh, it does. It's called Minotaur 4 and 5. I know it seems like I've skipped a part of the story, but I haven't. E-Prime successfully commercialized the Peacekeeper first stage back in 1999. Their biggest problem since then seems to have been funding. They didn't have much money back in the late 80s and never got enough to do serious work. And the last actual documentation of E-Prime I can find is from about 2008, so I don't know what they've been doing for the last 20 years. And then there's the fact that the companies that own the missile parts decided to build their own solid launchers themselves. How can you compete with that? Now, the larger modular approach has yet to be tested, but I can't see anything seriously wrong with the idea. It's mostly a systems integration problem. E-Prime is still around, they have a website, but I don't know what they're doing, or if they're still trying to sell this. Well, this conclusion is very disappointing because there's not much else to say about the Rocket family with a cool name and a relatively interesting idea. Eagle! That's a rocket, you know.